From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing whacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's like is 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more till for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think at 1-800-5800-TOM. Join our classroom discussion here by calling 1-800-5800-866. This is Robert on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much. I just want to tell you about a story that's going on in my life right now. All right. Uh, I got a girl pregnant. Didn't know she was pregnant for maybe about a month. And By the way, uh, you're not telling us the whole story. Yeah. You didn't just uh, get any girl pregnant, did you? My girlfriend. Your girlfriend. How old are you? I'm 21. And you have a girlfriend. Yes, I do. All right, go ahead. And a uh, month into the pregnancy... She actually hid it from me for about a, she, she knew for, well, she was pregnant for two months, but she hid it from me for about a month. And she finally told me, and when she told me, she told me that she had a miscarriage. And now I'm just stuck in this relationship, and I want to get out of it, but I really love her, dude. Oh. I, it's just, it's tough, it's tough. Well, so you want to have a baby. I want to have a baby, but I know I can't afford a baby. That's what? You're 21 years old. You're insane. You don't know what you're talking about. That, that, that's but exactly what I'm saying. I want a child. I don't care I don't what you money. want. I don't have the money for it. I'll but be, I don't I'll care. Be. The point is you are running the risk that she is going to get pregnant again. <laughs> I guess you're right. Because cause, yeah. let me guess. Let me see. 21-year-old, Mexican, right? Yeah. Yep, you're right. All right. So you've never seen a condom before. Let me guess. <laughs> and, well, and, and your yeah, girlfriend yeah. has never heard of Planned Parenthood either, right? I've heard of Planned Parenthood. I, I said your girlfriend's never heard of it. She, she used to take the pill. Just She used to take the pill when? Yeah. Uh, beginning of the relationship, actually. Oh, and then she intentionally stopped taking it and, de and deceived you in the process. In a sense, I guess. Not in a that, sense. But... Did she tell you she stopped taking it? Uh, she did, and then she kind of gave me the hint that she was taking it again. Didn't really ask her on it. So I, I, so I, she I, was lying. A little bit. Not a little bit. You either are or are not lying. Yeah, I guess she was. Lying. So you're in love with a woman who lies to you, deceives you, gets pregnant even though you can't afford to have a baby. That's what you're in love with? Son, you are immature, and you're proving it. I guess you're right. And, you know, I've, I've been listening to you maybe for about a year now, and uh, I've learned a lot, but I've... P clearly I've you have not learned enough. Lot. Yep, I guess you're right. You got lucky, son. When she had a miscarriage, you got lucky. <laughs> that's, that's not very nice to say, though, you know? Yeah, yo, you got lucky. It's kind of mean. That sounds kind of mean. That's you like got nice. lucky. <laughs> lucky? Lucky. Why isn't it lucky to have... Because you've now been saved from a life of changing my oil. Hey! I'm sorry. You have just been saved from a life of changing my oil. Huh? Or ringing up my groceries. Yep. Now, let's guess. What college are you going to? Let's see. Uh... It's a trade school, right? Right about now, yeah. <laughs> right. And what trade are we studying, son? Uh, right now, just doing engineering, actually, for... Uh, engineering? They're teaching engineering at a trade school? Well, it's kind of... It's more of a rapid prototyping uh, for, like... It's kind of hard to explain. 
you can't explain uh, what you're trying to study to do for a living? Yes, pretty much. What do you want to do for a living? Uh, just make as much money as possible. Construction? What happened? Construction? I, I was in construction before. Sure you were. Of, uh, uh, that burned me out. That burned me out pretty All quick. right, so you are studying what? It's... it's I'm pretty uh, intelligent. You try me. What happened? Oh, it's it's called uh, stereolithography. Stereolithography? Yes, it's actually 3D printing. Printing. So you want to become a printer. It's 3D printing. It's printing. Yeah, it uses a, a, a laser, a UV laser, and it cures resin in a vat, and then it just goes from there. All right. Now, much are you spending on this trade school to teach you printing? Uh, actually, the job that I'm working for is actually paying for everything. Right. And uh, why did you uh, give up on yourself as far as going to college or studying something of substance? Well... Just made because you made. just want to start banging your girlfriend and having babies. You've decided you're ready for that. Who needs college? Who needs a six-figure income? <laughs> Not you. Eh. Right? I, I do need that. No, you, that no you want to go to work, do a little printing, knock up your girlfriend... Have babies, not be able to pay for the babies, have to quit your printing career to go back to putting oil in my car <laughs> or construction. Huh? So what do, you, what, do you, what do you think I should do starting? Oh, come on. Now. You can't guess? I, I can guess, but what do you think I should do? Break up with her and go. I, I want you to drive to the nearest Rite Aid and buy condoms tonight. How about Costco and buy the, the like, 20-pack? Uh, if you like the one brand of condoms they sell, go right ahead. <laughs> Point is, it's time to start using them, son. It's time to grow up. Yeah, you're right. And by the way, aren't you worried about what you might catch from a skank like that? She's older than you. She'd probably bang more uh, guys than you've banged chicks. By ear? I hope she hasn't banged more. Well, I know you hope. I'm hoping the Easter Bunny is coming with brightly colored eggs. <laughs> That's what I want to. Yeah, well, I wouldn't hold my breath. Yeah. Thanks, so, Tom. So, condoms, you know, condoms for you. I'm dead serious. I will. I'll, I'll buy a couple. I'll send no, you no, some. no, don't buy a couple. Unless you're only planning on having sex twice. <laughs> All right. I don't like Cheers. the way it feels. I don't like the way it feels. That's hilarious. But you love giving money to some bitch for the rest of your life. I know. I have a, a lot of lying things. bitch. Dang. A lying, deceiving bitch. I know a couple friends that have child support put down on them, so I, I, I could kind of, kind of, kind of scary thought. <laughs> You're not so scared that you stop doing the stupid things you do, though, are you? I will be after this phone call. I think I will be. Where's your father, son? He passed away when I was about 10. It shows. Huh? You I need know. a man kicking your ass. 21. I feel like a man. Let me guess. Your mom is uh, 40. Mm, a little older than that. She's 55. 55? Yeah. Why would you want to then change the tradition in your family and start popping them out now? I don't know. What, why is this funny to you? It just sounds funny. Everything I hear is just like, I, I, I like you said, I should know and already know what I need to do. But uh, it just, it's tough. But there's nothing tough about it. You have to be a man and you have to step up and take responsibility. Don't you want to have money? Don't you want to have a nice place to live? I want a lot of money. Yeah, well, guess what? You're not going to get it the way you're going now. It's a tough one. There's nothing tough about it. What is so tough about saying, you know what? She deceived me. She got pregnant. I got lucky because she had a miscarriage. And so now I'm going to dump her ass and buy condoms and not be falling in love with any of these broads until I am successful in my chosen career. You can't really choose Why is that so goddamn with. tough? Because you can't really choose who you fall in love with. Oh, stop. Yes, you can. Prove it. Start with this. You're not falling in love with anybody until you're successful. 
If you fall in love with somebody, you're going to run the other direction. You're a little boy and you don't understand that those feelings can be controlled. Falling in love is just going to cost you money. Money you don't have and can't afford. So if I was rich, I could fall in love. Well, let me ask you a question. If you saw, what, what's the best expensive car you've ever seen? Your dream car. <clears throat> a Bugatti. Okay. If you went to a showroom and saw a Bugatti, you'd fall in love with it, wouldn't you? Like, I, like you wouldn't believe. Would you drive it home? I probably, if I had the money to do that, no, no, to buy it, no, no, buy you it, buy would it. you drive it home? Hell yeah! <laughs> oh, you would. How would you pay for it? If I seen it, or if I just you see it, you love it. Okay. Would you drive it home? There's no way I don't have the money for it. That's right, and that's the story about love as well. well you can't. Things, but... No, it's not. You can't afford a wife, a pregnant girlfriend, a baby. These are things you can't afford. The things you can't afford, you don't buy. You love a Bugatti, but you can't have one because you can't afford one. Yeah. You can't afford a girlfriend either. So if I have the money, would I? You would can't. I... You don't. But if I You're did, studying I, I, offset printing, for Christ's sake. You, come on. You're not going to have money anytime soon. Do you, know any, do you know any rich printers? Yeah. Yeah, who? The guy that started the company. The guy who started the company. You're not starting any companies. You're studying how to be a $10 an hour employee. I actually make more than that. But how much? Seventeen. How much? $17 an hour. Ooh, $17 an hour. You know how much $17 an hour is, son? Yep. That's $680 a week. Okay. That is a whopping, think about this, approximately $35,000 a year. Woohoo! Where would that get you an apartment, $35,000 a year? In the San Fernando Valley. Yeah, where? Pacoima, Arlita, or Panorama City? Silmar. Silmar. There you go. Well, you sure sound like a rich man to me. Give it time, Tom. I know this is going to work well, out. I know. You'll be the head printer and you'll be making $18 an hour. <laughs> so, I'll make my own business one day. You'll see. Sure you will. While I'll you're, you back. I'll when you back you're busy knocking up your girlfriend and having babies you can't afford, sure you will. Sure you will. Uh, you know, I I have the utmost respect for fathers. I'm sorry your dad isn't around today because you need him to kick your ass. He was a truck driver, too. Yeah, you know what? I'll bet your dad would have been great for you right now. You need him now. That's why I've stepped into the breach. I'm kicking your ass. Appreciate it, Tom. Your dad... Your dad would not tolerate you having babies at 21. Would he? I don't know. Never met that guy too much. Met yeah. him a couple of times, I was there. That's why you're such a pussy. <laughs> what if he was a pussy? No, no. He wasn't a pussy. He was a jerk. The kind of jerk you need to become. A jerk. Yeah. The kind that turned your mom on and made her say, let's make a baby. Oh, my God. You think I'm kidding? <laughs> I don't want to picture that, but it's just... That's what me. it is. The reason you didn't see him much is because your mom thought he was a jerk. Yeah. But isn't it interesting? That's the jerk who impregnated her. Your mom took her panties off, spread her legs, and said, Come on, do me. To a jerk. A that little awkward <laughs> I mean, um, well, you know what? I'm a dispassionate observer. I can say it. And how were you brought up, Tom? How was I brought up? Well, my parents were together until my dad died. And was your dad always kicking your ass about women? My dad was kicking my ass about everything. Okay. And I'm a multimillionaire, son. What are you? 
21. You're 21. Where you're, were you you're at not go- <laughs> Where was I at 21? Uh, college. Did you study what you're doing now? I did. It was a mistake, but I did, yes. I also dropped out of college because I went broke. Went back, continued for a while, went broke again. How and I tried. Huh? How do you feel about yourself now? Now, how do I feel about myself? Yeah. Proud. I can afford anything I want. I can have any girl I want. I don't have to be told what to do. Any type of woman starts telling me what to do or how to act or any type of woman starts coming to jump and ugly on me. I just get them the hell out of my life. I kick them out. I have a zero tolerance policy. Feels great. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You kind of sound like my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, because when she was pregnant, she had you by the balls, son. And that's the way it'll be the next time you knock her up. She will have you by the balls, and you will be pussy whipped, and that will be the end of the story right there. And you've never and, been and just and oh no, I'm not saying I never was. I'm saying I never will be again, and I would never recommend it to somebody like you. So I, I thought you were supposed to learn from your mistakes. I did. What about you? I'm gonna learn. Yeah, she just got knocked up, and she lied to you about birth control. And concealed the pregnancy, too. Tried to conceal it until it was too late to have an abortion. That's what she was doing to you, son. Have you learned from your mistakes? Apparently not. Hopefully. All I'm going to say to you, son, is uh, here's here is... Uh, let me give you my uh, prediction for the future, okay? Uh, I'm going to give it to you in the form of a request, okay? All right. When you're done putting the oil in my car, would you also check my wiper fluid? Like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. Sometimes I make a date to go out with them, and I do your rule. I say to them, what time are you having dinner? And then I say, I'll meet you for drinks afterwards. And then when they start demanding dinner to get together, I say, okay, let me make a reservation. And I call them back, and I say, look, I'm going to meet you at the restaurant. Get all dressed up and go to the restaurant. The only problem is I never show up. It's Likus 101 on the Tom Likus Show. It's the Tom Likas Show, Likas 101. I am your professor. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Sal on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much, Sal. What's going on? Hey, this is uh, Sal. I just said that. Oh, did you? Hi. Yes, I did. All right, well, here's my situation. Um, I was with my girlfriend... Got her pregnant. Well, step one, you're 24, you have a girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. Why? I don't, I don't know. Because you're, I, cause you're an idiot. listening to your show. I don't know. Okay, fine. Then I, uh, you had a baby with her, you say? Yeah. So we have we have a one-year-old right now. And why'd you do that? I'm sorry? Why did you do that? It wasn't, it wasn't intentional. It was kind of an accident. She was on birth control, and then she stopped taking it. Um, That's not an accident. Did, That's not an accident. Well, it, it's it not an was, accident. She knew. She told me she she had to stop taking it. Yeah, and she so said, why weren't you using a condom? Uh, same old dumb reason. Didn't like the way it feels. We were used to not using a condom because she was on the shot, so we could just yeah. have sex without without mm-hmm. using a condom. Now you're going to be paying her for the next seventeen years. Well, not her. Yes, directly. I'm going to be supporting the child. Yes, yes, um, but uh, you don't know if you're going to be with her for another ten years, five years, twenty years. You don't know. Right, exactly. I don't know, and that's my question. And now we have a baby. We, we're not living together. You know, I'm living. I'm still living at home. My parents. She's living at home with her parents. Holy cow! I know. I know. So we definitely, we obviously can't afford a baby. You know, but we have a I love them to death. What college did you attend, Sal? I'm sorry. What college did you attend? Uh, community college. Uh, so I have my associate's degree. I'm I'm um, planning to go back to get uh, you know bachelor's and. You're planning on that. When are you planning on doing that? A plan means uh, you have a date and a time. When will that be? Uh, this uh, was it uh, fall. So you have registered and you have put down uh, the, the the registration fee. Exactly. I actually just need about a year and a half to get my bachelor's. So I'm basically almost there. So and, I'm definitely going to have a degree. In what? In what? Answer. We'll get to that. In what? A degree in what? Business. Business. Right. I was and, in marketing for a while. I did some radio advertising, actually. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> why, why do you like that? How'd that I mean, work out? Radio. Yeah, that's why I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I know the sales guys do probably really well there, right? Well, uh, I don't work in Oxnard uh, like you, so I... <laughs> right. Uh, you were not working in L.A., were you? No, I'm not working in L.A. That's not a big business in Ventura or Oxnard, believe me. No, but the, the salespeople out here do make about six figures, though. Some not of them... seven figures. Some, no, no. <laughs> there might be a few salespeople making that much. Most of them are not. Okay. Well, well regardless, I'm 24, I mean. Do you, do you know a lot of 24-year-olds making six figures? Uh, well, put it this way, uh, those who went to college, got degrees, studied hard, and then uh, went right into business, some of them do earn six figures, yes. And even that, there's not that many professions where you can make six figures right off the bat. It depends on uh, how good you are and how uh, good your grades are and how good your degree is. Right. Okay. Well, I would say I would say there's a minimum of people making six figures who go to community college, then take time off to knock up their girlfriend, and then uh, kind of ditz around for a while doing some kind of blue collar job. A uh, minimum of uh, number of guys like that making six figures. Right. Okay. But also, I mean, would you would you also agree that there is like you don't really need a degree to kind of make money? I mean, that's just kind of, I mean, that's... that's it, a, uh, I would not recommend it, and I do not have a degree. Exactly. But but if I could have gotten one, I would have. Okay. If I could have gotten one, I would have. And because I didn't have one, I had to work ten times as hard as someone who did. I don't recommend that. And not doing it for you is just laziness. No, and I agree. I am going to admit right now I'm a lazy person. I then, really am. Then you're never going to earn six figures, pal. Well, I'm I'm lazy when it comes to school because I'm a I'm not a big fan of homework. You know, I mean. Yeah, but you know I'll, what? I'll Life is that. homework. You know what? Life is homework. If you're in sales, you have to sit home and work on your contact list. You got to work on your tickler file. You got to write up proposals. There's homework no matter what you do, son. It's called adulthood. And, you know, and that's a good point. But wouldn't you agree also that I can I can do well without having to go to college? Uh, not unless you really work ten times as hard as the guy who went to college, and uh, you strike me as someone who's too lazy to do that. Right. But what what is the bachelor's going to do for me? <laughs> well, you don't even know what you want to be when you grow up, son. I I know I want to be an entrepreneur, and I know you don't need a bachelor's for that. An entrepreneur with what? Where what capital are you going to have? Well, How do you start a business capital without right capital? How do you start a business without capital? No, you obviously need capital. No, yeah, and what business? Right. And what business specifically are you going to be in? I want to hear what business it is. <laughs> no, because you probably wouldn't be a big fan. But what is it? Uh, music production. Yeah, right. And another thing you know nothing about, and where it's a business where they are just laying people off like there's no tomorrow. Right, but that's why I say I don't want to be employed in the music and, industry. And do you live in Oxnard? Yes. How much music production do you think is happening in the Ventura, Oxnard area? I didn't say I wanted to be a uh, music producer in Oxnard. Obviously, that's not going to work. But I'm like 40 minutes away from L.A. So, no, I mean, yeah, no, no, you're 40 minutes away. Issue. No, you're 40. Son, I own a house up in Santa Barbara County. I drive through Oxnard all the time. You're right. 40 minutes away from L.A. if you leave at 2 a.m. Okay. Which you won't be. <laughs> all right. Well, then, but regardless, I mean, it, let's say I moved down to L.A. Now I'm in L.A. Regardless, the location, I mean, it's obviously important, but, I mean, that's exactly what I want to do right there. Music, music but you know nothing about that business. Nothing. Zero. I know some. I mean, little. Yeah, you bought it. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you, you own a couple of CDs. What do you know about that business? Specifically, because, by the way, audio production is what we do. Tell me specifically what you've produced. I, I work with software, and I have, uh, you know... Tell me specifically instruments. what you have produced. Music. What what kind of music? You mean on your MySpace page? No, no, I don't have anything on my MySpace yet, because right. I haven't copywritten what, anything yet. What have you, oh, so you have nothing copywritten. What what have you produced? What have I produced is music, or, or um, orchestral-type music. Uh, you know, I want to get into, like, film scoring. You want to get into film scoring, but you don't want to go to school. Don't you think the best people in that business have degrees from places like Juilliard School in New York or other schools where they teach uh, music? Probably. Yeah. Do all of them? Uh, prob I would be not, willing right? to bet the successful ones have been to school. Okay. But you know, music, I mean... sco music scoring is, is more than just music. 
It requires a knowledge of film as well. Right. Which you don't have. I agree. And you won't get it at a trade school or at the closed cover before striking school for music production. Okay. So then what would you recommend? If I want to be a big music producer, what should I do? School. Obviously go to school. Yes. Go to school. And while you're going to school, uh, become an intern at a production studio. And that means you have to leave Oxnard, son. I agree. I'm not, yeah, Oxnard. There's nothing in Oxnard. Yeah, but you're 24 and you're still there with your mommy and daddy. Because you're a loser. Well, I did have a child, you know. With a, well, whose fault is that? that? That's the essence of being a loser, having a child while you're living with your mom and dad. That's a loser. I mean, if that's not a loser, who is? Right. But obviously, I mean, I can still do something about You have it, right? dug yourself a big, fat hole. Right. But which I can still do something about, right? It's highly unlikely. I mean, you can Why try, and you should try. But the fact is, now you have to spend money on that kid and that kid's mother. Right. And that is going to take away from the money you could spend on books, software, classes, transportation to school. Buying a car. Living in a decent place. Right. All things now you've effed yourself permanently. You can't afford any of that stuff. But it can be done. Well, fine. You know what? Somebody's going to win the big spin Saturday night. Do you think it's going to be anybody you know? <laughs> I hope it's me. <laughs> Some you know, A guy recently fell out a 46-story window, and he lived. It can be done. Exactly. You want to jump out a 46-story window and find out if you can do it, too? Uh, no, definitely not. The fact that something not. can be done doesn't mean it's likely to be done. Right. And I you're mean, not likely to do it because you're lazy. You said by your own admission, you're lazy. Do you not believe that people can change? or You're, you know, you're not showing any signs of changing. Well, I mean, you're talking, you're talking about minutes. marrying. You're talking about marrying the mother of your child, no, 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 which no, no, will no. I only. I will never. I will never marry her. You asked me that question during this call. No, 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 no. I said, uh, as far as what should I do? I mean, I. The the initial question. Was, Did you ask that question? What was the question? <sighs> Jesus Christ. No, no, I'm sorry. I don't want to get you frustrated, Tom, because I know how you go. Don't off, be so. a brick. You said to the screener, quote, I have a kid with, um, he typed it as you said it. I have a kid with my girlfriend. Should I marry her? That's what you said you wanted to ask me, isn't it? Well, it was more. Yeah, isn't that, that what, what you I said asked. to Dean? You did say that. Then you I got did. on the air and said that too. Now you're saying you would never do it and you didn't say it. Don't try to make me out to be some kind of insane person. This is my no, job. No, no, no. Unlike so you angry. sitting there with your mommy and daddy and, and cranking out illegitimate children, I'm down here with a with a productive career, and, and part of my job is listening very carefully to the nuances of the things you say. Right. You said, should I marry my girlfriend? Don't you then later in the conversation start telling me you never said that or that you would never do no, it? No, no, I said it. I said it. You would do it. And I... Well, can I rephrase You my would question? do it, wouldn't you? No. No, well, can I rephrase So when you question? ask, wait, wait, wait no, we're not, we'll get to that later. When okay. you ask that question, you had no intention of ever considering doing it, then why even ask? Okay. I did. I, I, I considered it. Right. And you were considering it within the last 11 minutes and five seconds. Okay. I've considered it within the last, you know. So stop pretending minutes. that you would never consider it. That's a, that's a lie. Okay. Okay. There you go. And you see, oh. the problem with losers like yourself is you, sure. you're living in a dream world. You can't even, you can't even own up to what you said 10 minutes ago. You can't, you can't take responsibility for anything. That's why you're where you're at. In Oxnard with mommy and daddy, with some pipe dream that you're going to become a music producer, with no experience in the business, it's some pipe dream that at 24 with no college education, Community college is not a college education, son. It's 13th grade. You, with no real college education, you're suddenly going to be scoring films and doing music production with no background in the industry, no internships, no contacts, no nothing. you got to start somewhere, right? Uh, you haven't started anywhere. And you're doing it with one hand tied behind your back. You have a kid. You're still having sex without condoms. And on top of that, you're talking about marrying your girlfriend. 
in Oxnard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, all your, you know, everything you're saying is true. I know. Well, you haven't saying, started, I mean, you haven't started, you haven't started to do anything. Well, I have, because, I mean, I continuously work on my music, and I, I have had... No, I, I, you know what? I, you're working on a pipe dream. I mean, I sat home and played the kazoo myself, okay? So what? What have you ever done that anybody has ever bought? What have you ever done for anybody that's been sold? What have you ever done outside of your, uh, outside of mommy and daddy's house? Well, Nothing. Not you I'm haven't sure. done, and you're 24 goddamn years old, son. Grow up. You're not 17. You're not 18. You're not 19. You're not 20. You are legal age to vote, to drink, to get married, to be in the military. And you're three years beyond that. And you haven't done anything. You haven't done anything. At all. Nothing. Except have a bastard child. That's the only thing you've done. That's the only productivity I see here. At least it's something. Right? All you're good at doing is producing illegitimate children. You're producing music? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> well, I mean, that's kind of hard since you've never heard any of my music. I don't care. You, guess what? If your music was that good... You know, there was one girl on MySpace who had a song on there, and it became a hit record. And that's about it. Everybody else is living in a dream world, like you. Well, I know, I, I'll admit that it's a tough business. It's but, not just uh, a tough business. If it's somebody like you, it's impossible. Now, had you followed the Tom Likas method, had you moved to Los Angeles at 16, 17, or 18, had you gone to a decent school, had you hung out and become a studio rat by hanging around the back door of studio saying, please, can I come in? Please, can I watch how you do things? Please, can you show me some of the things you know? Had you made contact with various individuals in the music and the production industries and the film industry, had you ever set foot on the lot of a movie studio, you might have a shot. But you have done everything in your imagination. You've done nothing in the real world. Nothing. Thinking about doing something is not the same as doing it. I agree. No, and you've did, done nothing. You've done... Now, you first have to accept what I'm saying. You have done nothing but produce an illegitimate child, which was manifestly irresponsible. That's the only thing you've produced. Okay. I, I, I'll admit that. I'll so admit that, so you, are, you, is, you are now at the same... No, you're at a worse position than a 17-year-old. Because most 17-year-olds haven't had a baby. Right. So now you are seven years behind the eight ball with a child. Like I said, my question to you is, is it too late? It's never too late, but you're lazy and you said you're lazy. Right. And because you're lazy, it probably is too late. Okay. All right. You know, I, I can I can accept that. I mean, that makes total sense. I mean, anybody who's lazy at any age isn't going to do anything. All right. You're sitting in Oxnard with mommy and daddy. Then let me ask you this, and this I've been trying to ponder for a while, because if I can figure this out, I'll be a billionaire. What's the cure to laziness? <laughs> well, uh, put it this way. For some people, it's poverty. It's which, what poverty? Poverty, which is what you're heading for. I think it's halfway there. All right. No, no, you're not so halfway people... there, son. How much money do you make? I make about $3,000 a month. So you make $36,000 a year. Right. And you have a baby. Right. Mm -hmm. so that means you take home, what, about, uh, about 27000 uh, something like that? You take home about $2,100, $2,200 a month, maybe? Right. And you have to pay for a baby. Right. And you can't even afford your own place to live. It's California. <laughs> it's no, 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 It's California forever. There's 40 million people living here in California. Struggling Many of us that. have, well, struggling because we're idiots, struggling because we're lazy, struggling because we don't work hard, struggling because we, we sit there imagining that we're doing something that we're not actually doing. That's why we're struggling, son. Exactly. So besides uh, poverty, what's the other cure to cure laziness? Some for some people, even poverty doesn't cure it. You know, eviction is one thing that might cure laziness. Um, 
the, the, the woman who you had the baby with uh, leaving town and then hitting you up with a child support notice. Okay, so you're saying that basic drastic measures? Yes. You have to completely change your whole attitude and change your life. And I just don't think you're willing to do it. Tom Like is 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866.